Hey, great to see you again. We're going to continue our study of the book of Philippians, the, the book of joy written by the Apostle Paul and uh, trying to find some joy while we're separated socially from all of our friends, all the people that we'd normally be close to. Uh, some of you I know are still at work at your normal jobs. Some of you are still at work at home. Some of you are out of work and I pray that uh, you can still find joy in these difficult times. Uh, the, the text is just verse 11, but I'll read verses 9 and 10 just to give you a little bit of context. It starts right here, what we heard yesterday. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. And here's the verse we're talking about today. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Filled with with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Wonderful words from the Apostle Paul, continuing to express his wish for the people there in Philippi. Um, he wants them to be filled with the fruit of righteousness. And how, do, how does that fruit of righteousness come? It comes through Jesus Christ. For what purpose? To the glory and praise of of God. Uh, if you want some ways to kind of maybe help you explain this to yourself and to, and to children, you can go down into the description of this video and there will be a link posted with some ideas as I've had the last couple of days. But I look through that and I say filled with the fruit of righteousness and, and uh, when I think of the word filled, I think of like after I'm done eating, I'm full, I don't need any more, I've, I've had enough. That's one way to think about it. Uh, but I remember when my son Jack was a little bit younger and he was listening to some loud music, he loved it. And he goes, Mommy, I can feel the music in my tummy. Maybe you felt that when you've listened to a tune you really like and the volume was loud enough you could feel either the bass beating or there was something inside of you that just made you had to move. Either tap your finger, tap your foot, or dance. Um, that's the kind of filled I'm imagining when you're filled with the fruit of righteousness um, that comes through Jesus Christ. So much do you relish and love and enjoy the forgiveness and life that comes through Jesus that it fills you. Um, the Apostle Paul talks about fruit in a couple of other places, uh, other letters he's written. There's one in the letter to the Galatians that he wrote, um, and you can find those in that little sheet too, that link, or that, that connect uh, the scriptures to the types of of fruit that we're talking about. I, I usually explain it to catechism kids like this. If you have an apple tree, how do you know it's an apple tree? And if you're really smart, you might know by the shape of the tree or what the leaves look like, but usually you know because of the fruit. How do you know a Christian is a Christian? Ah, looks just like any other person, but you know by the way they act and what they say. Uh, it's the same way, right? Uh, by your fruit, people know who you are. And that's what Paul is talking about here with the Philippians. You're filled with the fruit of righteousness. Now this, Paul always describes it this way. It's not a righteousness that earns you any, any good standing before God, but this is righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ lives in you, lives in the Philippians, lives in me. And because he lives in me, I show that by what I say and what I do. Um, and that's only half of it, right? Because you know that, that, that righteousness is also part of what you think and in your heart. And no one knows that but you and God. Um, and as you grow and mature, like we talked about yesterday in your faith, my prayer is that your fruit is also fruits of, of thoughts and ideas and desires that, that will uh, please God, right? That's what he's talking about here. All of this to the glory and praise of God. You want to glorify God in all that you do. You want your words to be words of praise to God. Now that doesn't mean coming to church, especially not right now and just singing an alleluia or singing the holy, holy, holy or the gloria or something like that here at church. Um, praising and glorifying God is, is very simple, right? Listening to what the government tells us to do, even if we think it's silly. Um, uh, a child obeying mom or dad because they're stuck in the house. Um, loving and serving each other, even though it's not the easiest thing in the world right now. Um, single people dealing with, in a godly way, the separation and the anxiety that comes from being so isolated, so isolated. Uh, and on the other end, uh, families stuck in their homes together, dealing with the anxiety and the pressure that comes being cooped up, comes from being cooped up together for so long. 
Uh, these are all ways, if we deal with them in God, pleasing way that we praise and we glorify God. One note on the word glory before I let you go today. Whenever I see the word glory, I try to think, what does glory mean? Um, it's not just a proclamation of play, praise, otherwise that would be kind of a redundant thing, but it's something that shines the light on God and puts him at the center of what you're doing. How can you glorify God? And if you want to know the, the, the best way to glorify God, look at the purest, the, the purest and clearest picture of the glory of God, and that is his son. Jesus is the glory of God personified. In human flesh, he's the glory of God. And so we imitate him. And the rest of the epistle to the Philippians, as we'll see as we work through it together, we'll, we'll continue to talk about that, uh, how we glorify God by imitating Christ. Um, not to earn anything, but as an overflowing and abounding of the love he has shown us. Hey, God's blessings to you as you fight through. Uh, I'll keep praying for you and you keep praying for me. Uh, I see, I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.